Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to work with our examples with intervals and inequalities. So first, let's draw the following intervals or inequalities graphically. So I'm going to give you the interval or inequality and you're going to draw the graph. So here are our intervals and our inequalities. If you'd like, you can actually pause the video now and try this on your own. You want to take these intervals or inequalities and represent them as graphs. But if you're feeling unsure, no worries, I will just go ahead and do these with you. There will be time at the next example to pause and try it on your own if you'd like. Okay, so first we're looking at x is less than 8. On my number lines, I'm also just going to label them with an x to indicate that we're looking at x values. I'm doing this just because I see that the inequalities we were given have x values in them, so I want to draw number lines that are also x values. So here I'm going to just draw a number line, and I'm personally just going to put the minimal amount of information needed on these. You could put more if you want. Um, I'm just going to draw an 8 and then think, okay, I'm looking at all of the x values less than that. So I'm going to use an open circle on the 8 since we're not doing a less than or equal to. We're just doing a strictly less than. Then I'll draw a solid line going to the left. So the less than, the more negative. And then an arrow just to indicate that this goes on forever. Okay, then the next one, we're looking at the interval from negative 3 to 0, where we include negative 3 and we don't include 0. So again, I'm just going to put negative 3 and 0 on my number line. I'm going to use a solid dot with negative 3 to indicate that we're including that point that corresponds to the square bracket on the negative 3. And then I'll use an open circle on the 0 to indicate that we're going all the way up to that point but not exactly including it, and that's because of the parentheses. Then we're including all the values in between those, so I'm just going to indicate that with a solid line in between those two points. And there we go. This is all of the x values between negative 3 and 0, including negative 3 and not including 0. Okay, this next one looks a little more complicated. It has a union symbol. So we're looking at the interval between 1 and 2 and the interval from 4 to infinity. So I have this first interval. The square brackets tell me that I'm going to use filled in circles for each of those points. So I have a filled in circle at 1 and 2. And then I'm looking at all the points in between them. So I put a solid line in between those two points. Then I now have the second interval. So I'm looking at everything from 4 to infinity. So I'm not including 4 because of the parentheses, so I'm going to just have an open circle. And then I put an arrow going to the right, or the more positive, toward the positive infinity. And then an arrow to just indicate that we're going forever in that direction. And that's it. This would be my number line. Okay, then we have our last example. We're looking at x is greater than or equal to 5, and x is not equal to 7. So this one's a little tricky, but let's just do one part at a time. So, okay, we're going to start with the 5. I know that I'm including that point, so I'm going to use a filled in circle there. And then I'm looking at x is greater than or equal to that. So I'm going to put a solid line from 5 going to the right to the more positive. So everything greater than or equal to 5. So I've successfully done this first inequality, x is greater than or equal to 5. But then I also need to do x is not equal to 7. So how am I going to do that? Let's take the point at 7 and just erase a little bit around it. And what I'm going to do is basically just remove that point using an open circle. So I put an open circle at 7, which basically means we've removed just 7, and we have all of the other points still around it. So this represents x is not equal to 7. And there we go. So we have x is greater than or equal to 5, and we just remove 7 from that. So before we move on, I just want to task us with one more thing. Let's go ahead and for all of these examples we just did, let's rewrite them using the other notation. So if we used intervals, let's write them as inequalities and vice versa. So let's start with the first example. I was given an inequality with x is less than 8, and I want to write this as an interval. So I'm going to write this as negative infinity to 8, and because I have an infinity and an open circle, I'm going to use parentheses for both. So I have the interval from negative infinity to 8 not including negative infinity or 8, so parentheses, soft brackets. Okay, then next I was given an interval, so let's write this as an inequality. So here I'm looking at the values between negative 3 and 0, so I'm going to write negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 0. And again, I use less than or equals for when we're including the point, and I use just less than for when we have that open circle. 
Okay, now we have another example where we were given intervals and we're going to write them as inequalities. So we'll just do one part at a time. I'm going to write one is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to two. That's for that first interval on the left. So we're looking at everything between one and two and we do include those points. So we use the less than or equal to sign. Then we're looking at all of the x's greater than four. So I'm looking at x is greater than four. I find often just by trying to read out what I'm looking at, I'm able to quickly come up with the symbols that I need. So x is greater than four and we'll combine those with an or. Okay, now we have our final example. We were given inequality notation and we want to write it as interval notation. So what I'm going to do is just think of this as two intervals. I have the interval from five to seven and then the interval from seven to infinity. So with five to seven, I use a square bracket for the five since we have a filled in circle, I'm including that. And then all the way to seven, I use seven with an open parenthesis or with a parenthesis, just to indicate we're not including that value. Then I'll use the U to union an interval that goes from seven to infinity. And there we go. Okay, so that's it for this example. For the next example, I will start with the graphs and we'll go the other direction. So now let's write the following number line graphs as both inequalities and intervals. So here are the graphs I want you to look at. And why don't you go ahead and pause the video and give this a try. So try to write the interval and the inequality notation for each of these graphs and then come back and we'll do it together. All right, let's start working through this. So let's look at this first example. I'm going to write both the interval and the inequality. So I'm seeing here that I'm looking at the values between one and four, and I'm not including those endpoints. So for the interval, I'm going to have one comma four, and then to contain that interval, I'm going to use parentheses, the soft braces, to indicate that I'm not including those endpoints. Okay. Then similarly for the inequality, I'm going to use just less than symbols to indicate that I'm not including the endpoints. So I have one is less than X is less than four. So all of the X values between one and four, not including the endpoints. All right, so this next example has two parts. So we're going to have two intervals or two inequalities. So first I'm seeing the left hand side. We're looking at everything up to negative two. So as an interval, this will be negative infinity to negative two, and we'll use parentheses on both of those values to indicate that we're not including them. So we don't include negative infinity and we don't include the negative two. Then we're going to union this with the second interval to include the right hand part of the graph. So here we're looking at everything greater than or equal to nine, so nine to infinity. And this time we'll use the square bracket or the hard bracket on nine to indicate that we're including that point. It has that filled in dot. And then we use the parentheses with infinity because we always use parentheses with negative infinity or infinity, at least in our version of math we're working in right now. Okay, then as an inequality, we're going to just write each of these and then write or to put them together. So I have X is less than negative two or X is greater than or equal to nine. So everything less than negative two or greater than or equal to nine. Okay, next up we have one that has three different parts to it. So again, this will be three intervals or three inequalities. So we'll just start from left to right. So I see we have the points from zero to one. We're not including one, but we do include zero. So I have a hard bracket, a square bracket on zero and then a parenthesis on one. Then I'll use the union symbol and we're going to write in my second interval. This time we're looking at the points between two and three and we're including both of the endpoints. So I'm going to use the square brackets on both two and three. Then we'll do one more union for the last little interval. This one we're looking at the points between four and five and we're not including four or five. So we'll use parentheses on both. Okay, so now to just write this as an inequality. First I have zero is less than or equal to X is less than one. So that's x between zero and one, and it could be zero, but we don't include one. Then we use or to write the next one. So now we have two is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to three. So these are all of the values between two and three, and it can be either of the endpoints. So that's the or equal to part. 
Then we'll write one more or to write our final part. Now we have four is less than X is less than five. So here X is between four and five, but we don't include those endpoints. So it's just strictly less than for both of the symbols. And there we go. Okay, just one more. So here we have all values except for eight. So we have solid lines going in both directions, but we've just taken out that point eight. Honestly, I think this is one of the trickiest ones because it just seems so simple, but it's hard to know how to write it. So here the open circle tells me that we're really going to have two intervals. We have an interval to the left of eight and to the right of eight. So the interval to the left of eight will look like negative infinity to eight. And we'll use parentheses on both since we don't include negative infinity and we're going all the way up to eight, but not including it since it has that open circle. Then we're going to union this with the interval on the right. So we'll just union the interval from eight to infinity, again, using the parentheses to not include either of these endpoints. And this is it. I like to think of this as really being the interval of negative infinity to positive infinity, so all values, but we've just taken out that point eight by removing it with this union and the eight and the parentheses. So if we just had negative infinity to positive infinity, that would be all real numbers on this number line, but instead we've just taken out the point eight. So when it comes time to write this as an inequality, I like to just write x is not equal to eight. So it's everything except x is not equal to eight. There are maybe some other ways you could write this, but this is the simplest way, I think. Just say x is not equal to eight. All right, and there we go. So these are our examples with intervals and inequalities. Doing this type of work where we write things in this way comes up in so many other types of math. So this is really just our first taste of it, our first time to try it out. And then we'll get a lot more practice as we continue to do this, learning more concepts that build on it. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.